So my name is Dr. Albert Ha. Um, I'm Korean American. Grew up in Southern California uh, in Los Angeles. Went to medical school at Harvard. Did my residency in urology at Columbia University in New York. And I recently completed my fellowship in andrology at Stanford University. No, it's a great question. I think there are a lot of very competitive fields out there. Uh, within medicine and urology is one of the most competitive to get into. Many reasons why, but long story short, there's no, only so many spots available for training and there's a lot of popularity and demand for the, um, within the field. Um, I really like urology uh, for several reasons. It has a very big breadth and depth uh, to the problem within the GU system and there are a lot of different ways we can go about solving it. It could be medical, with uh, medications, in-office testing, procedures, as well as surgical with, you know, operations that involve robotics, open surgery, um, and a lot of specialized equipment like cameras and lasers. So there are a lot of different ways in which we can tackle the problem. It's also, you know, the types of patients and the types of problems we deal with. Urology is a very interesting field in the sense that you get to deal with some of the most uncomfortable and most sensitive parts of you know, one's life. Because of that, I think you can make a significant difference to the patient, especially in regards to the quality of life. And I think from that component, um, I was drawn into this particular field, you know, sexual medicine and male infertility, which I specialize in. The implant is one of those surgeries I think most, even medical students don't, aren't aware of. You know, most uh, lay people don't know that this exists. And oftentimes when they learn about it, they're very fascinated by it. And me too. You know, I was very fascinated by this device and what it's supposed to do. And as a resident, I really liked how the operation seems straightforward at first. However, there's so much nuance to it. And what's more um, exciting for me is that there's no one right answer, you know, the to attack the problem correctly. So there are many different ways in which you can, you can skin the cat, I suppose. Um, and many different methods, many different approaches. And ultimately, you know, our goal is to really provide a solid, good operation for the patient so that uh, the patient can be very happy and really substantially improve his quality of life afterwards. I think the surgery, you know, itself is very interesting. I think there has been substantial advancements in terms of technique and innovation approaches. Um, it's one of those surgeries that people continuously refine and improve even for the past few decades. It's a very fun operation to do. It's very nuanced with a lot of small intricacies that uh, people should be aware of. Not necessarily because it can lead to devastating uh, consequences or complications, but again, it really focuses on the quality of life and making sure that you know, our patient who has this device is very happy with it, comfortable with it, is able to use it effectively, and most of all, you know, really improve his quality of life as he, you know, restores that uh, erection um, in his life. That's a very interesting question. I sometimes wonder about this myself. We had a handful of Asian patients who were interested in the implant, also with erectile dysfunction and other ancillary problems. I think there still needs to be a little bit more investigation into this whether it be a cultural barrier, language barrier, or just an access issue or even awareness. I do think there are certain groups within the United States where it's incredibly popular. Everyone is aware of this. It's almost just like a social norm for them. But I wonder if it's like that within uh, Asian cultures. I suspect not. I wish there was an easier answer to this. Uh, not necessarily to, you know, compartmentalize different groups, but just to kind of conceptually make it easier for people. However, I don't think there is. Everyone's anatomy is very different. And I think that kind of speaks to why as a urologist and as like a, a sexual medicine specialist, the physical exam is incredibly important. Everyone is gonna be different, different anatomy, different size, you know, different surgical history, medical history, a lot of it's gonna be nuanced. 
And I think that kind of also speaks to why I like this operation the most, because there's no one right way or one same way to do this operation. For each patient, you might have to change things just a little bit just to make sure everything's seated perfectly. From measuring the size to different types of devices, which devices preferred one or the other, um, also taking into consideration other factors within that person's life. If there is, I'm not too aware of it. Um, but I, again, I think ultimately my, in my view, it's gonna be individualized. I can tell you I've seen Asian patients with various different, you know, um, considerations to their genitals for one reason or the other. And same thing with Caucasians, same thing with African Americans. And that kind of, again, speaks to the beauty of the surgery itself. And the ultimate goal for us is to uh, restore that erectile function in a very individualized way so that, you know, people are really going to be uh, satisfied and kind of get that quality of life back. Oh, it's fantastic. I would say um, it's been a blast working with Dr. Park this past week. I've learned so much just from talking to him about uh, sexual medicine, penile implants, about life in general. You know, he's been a great mentor so far and I've really, really been humbled and very um, happy to have met him. He's been incredibly generous uh, with his time and with his knowledge. I think moving forward, I, I really hope more and more people would be able to see what he does here. You know, it's very different from the U.S. It's a different patient population, different country, but the beauty about a lot of uh, medicine in this world is there are a lot of principles, a lot of things similar that I think all surgeons will benefit learning from and learning about. His reputation in the United States, I mean, he is a high volume implanter. He's very well known in the sexual medicine community. He's well known for his ability to successfully and you know, efficiently perform a uh, penile implant using local anesthesia. That is just unheard of in the United States. And I've always wanted to see somebody uh, who would be able to do it like that. And me being Korean um, and having an opportunity to spend some time in Korea, I really wanted to, you know, learn from him and see like how he is able to pull this off because it's amazing. Yeah, so um, since I'm fellowship trained in sexual medicine and male infertility, I do hope to make that a big part of my practice. Ideally, almost like a, a combination of both uh, subspecialties. So dealing with medical and surgical issues within sexual medicine, focusing on uh, implants, and other aspects of, um, you know, other sexual medicine disorders, as well as um, male infertility issues, just uh, sperm retrievals, varicoceles, vasectomy and vasectomy reversals, things like that.